Hey guys, John Weiss here with another Comageddon review. This time it's going to be of Thor Ragnarok, which officially debuts today at your local theaters. Check it out. I got a chance to go to one of the advanced screenings yesterday that would play last night at various theaters. Uh, I went to the Avon Theater here in Decatur, Illinois. So they were doing a $5 special on 2D or 3D with no upcharge. So if you're in Decatur, Illinois, Central Illinois area, and you have a chance to hit up the Avon Theater on one of their special showings, special Facebook showings, uh, which means you'll have to like them on Facebook. That's the Avon Theater. Um, then you can go in $5, go see 2D or 3D. Um, just FYI, anytime you go see a 3D movie at the Avon Theater, there is no upcharge. So always happy to plug a local business. But let's get on the topic at hand, Thor Ragnarok, the highly anticipated Marvel movie of the year. Uh, for me, it was Spider-Man. So Thor Ragnarok, everybody's saying the best Marvel movie to date. I strongly disagree. <laughs> Sorry, it's not the best Marvel movie. Uh, Iron Man, any Captain America movie, Spider-Man Homecoming, uh, Doctor Strange, uh, not Thor Ragnarok. So far to me, as far as movies go, Thor has been the weakest of all of them. Um, I enjoyed, I really liked the, the first one, the second one not so much. The third one I liked better than the second one, but still, it's, it's just not, something wasn't right with this movie. I think um, they tried to go two Guardians with this movie. They really did. They tried to they, they tried to go two Guardians of the Galaxy with this. A lot of a lot of the things that you've heard about a lot too much a lot of humor. Too much humor. Um, it tried like I said. It tried to go Guardians of the Galaxy when it just should have stuck to the formula the first one had, which took Thor a little bit more serious, but had some humor in it as opposed to too dark like the second one. Uh, and this one just. I don't know, I think it really, it really it missed. It, it, it missed. Uh, was it funny? Of course, yes, it was funny. There were very, very funny moments in the movie. <coughs> um, and since at this point, I should probably tell you there's going to be spoilers. So, um, for those of you Hulk fans who are, were hoping for a uh, decent Planet Hulk movie, sorry. No. <laughs> uh, is there a Planet Hulk story here ish <laughs> kinda um but don't expect this to be um uh, thor ragnarok with uh planet hulk b storyline since it's not there um yeah um jeff goldblum um don't look for the collector 2.0 he's not the, is he related to the collector Marvel comic fans know yes. In this movie, you have no freaking clue except for the little thing right here. I don't know what the hell that is. It's not a goatee. It's just a little strip of paint. I don't know what the hell that is. Collector has it too. So, but no. Um, Jeff Goldblum. He came off as way too too fucking goofy. Uh, I love Jeff Goldblum. Goldblum is amazing. Um, but in this movie, he just he didn't fit. Was he funny? Yes. Hulk. Hulk might have been one of the shining moments of the movie, honestly. Um, yeah. Uh, was he funny? Yes. Um, and of course, um, his alter ego, Bruce Banner, he was there. He funny? Yeah. You're going to hear me say this. Was this person funny? Yes. Was this person funny? Yes. Uh, the only person that really wasn't meant to be funny and wasn't funny was the main villain, which is Hela, the queen of death, the queen of hell, uh, who in this movie plays Thor's uh, sister, the firstborn of Odin, who is released when, spoiler, 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 okay, I'm warning you ahead of time, lots of spoilers in here, uh, Odin dies, and then, because he is holding, holding her captive, captive, and then is released when he dies. And why does he die? I'm not going to go over that. But we do find out what happened to Thor, uh, or we do find out what happened to Odin uh, by, at, at the end events of Thor um, Dark World. The second Thor movie that was Dark World. I just call it Thor 2. But yeah.
Loki's role in this movie, uh, Tom Hiddleston nails it as Loki. Uh, another high moment of the movie is Loki. Thor, Chris Hemsworth. He, he's Thor? And this, this whole thing. It's moving. I'm, I apologize. My, my laptop screen is just moving. He's too... He's not... I don't know. There, there, something seemed off about his Thor this time around. So... Yeah, I just, I don't know. I'm trying to, I'm, I'm really trying to figure out what is wrong with uh, Hemsworth's Thor. He was Thor, but, I don't know, it was almost like he was trying to be too much Star-Lord, I guess would be, would be the proper explanation. Characters that were, should have been taken more serious, like uh, uh, the, ex the character of the Executioner, I think his name is Scourge, um, again, plays as a comic relief character, but but um, Carl Urban does a good job. Um, I've never known Carl Urban to do a bad job. So, uh, and he's almost unrecognizable. Uh, with the bald head, he's beefed up and everything. So there were moments that I forgot. I, honestly, when I went in to see the movie, I f totally forgot he was in it. And I kept seeing this guy. I was like, that looks like Carl Urban. And it is. So good job on, on that. Um, the character of Salter. Uh, the flaming demon thing that you see in the trailer. I know he's supposed to be taken more serious in the comic book. Again, he plays kind of like off of like a like a comic relief character between back and forth. Thor, it's just, I don't it, it seems like a mess to me. This plays out more like a sci-fi Flash Gordon movie than it does a Thor movie to me. And I get why they're doing it. They're trying to set things up for Thor to meet up with the Guardians of the Galaxy in the Avengers movie. So they're trying to get him more more familiar with that type of era, you know, environment. <clears throat> but it just came off... I don't know, just, it just, there was something that was really weird about it. And I just, I don't know. Um, my big beef was there was too much humor. Speaking of cameos... This, for me, was the highlight of the movie. Yes, Doctor Strange does appear in the movie. He does cameo. Um, and it was, it was, it was it, that, that, that whole thing was also very humorous. Um, we see a lot, most, a lot of the scene that takes place in Thor Ragnarok is a scene we already saw at the end of Doctor Strange. So not only was that kind of a teaser, but it was also the main scene of the cam his cameo in Thor Ragnarok. Um, but there were various events that took place before and after that were quite humorous. And, but yeah, and he does still wear the yellow gloves, which freaking I geeked out over the whole thing. Um, I apologize, should we look this way or look this way? I'm at work, so I kind of have to keep out an eye out for customers. So, um... Overall, was it an enjoyable movie? Yes. Did I like the movie? Yes. Did I have issues with it? More than I would like. Um, is it the best Marvel movie? No. Uh, not the best Marvel movie. <laughs> like I said, um, the Captain America trilogy, um, Avengers, Iron Man, uh, Spider-Man Homecoming, Doctor Strange, um, Guardians of the Galaxy, all these, uh, I would sit down and watch multiple times, even at the theater. Thor Ragnarok, for me, is a one-time view at the theater. I'll see it again when it comes out on Blu-ray. I don't know how many times I'll see it when I, when I get it, but I'll get it on Blu-ray, I'll watch it, and, um, yeah, that's, that's my thoughts on Thor Ragnarok. Um, if you've already seen it, or you've seen, seen it, say, today or tomorrow, whatever, you, you've seen Thor Ragnarok, let us know what you think. Let me know what you think. Uh, do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Let us know down in the comments below. Uh, also, please make sure you like, subscribe, and uh, tune in for more Comageddon reviews here on Comageddon TV on YouTube. Thanks for watching.